How's it going, YouTube? This is Skull, and in just a week now, Crew Dragon Demonstration Mission 2 will be launching from Florida, marking America's return to space after the last space shuttle launched in July 2011. That's a 10-year gap between manned space flights almost, and during that time, there have been quite a few unmanned space flights, obviously, that have launched out of Florida, including three that I have gone to. One I've already shown you guys, which was the GOES-17 launch in, I'd like to say, March 2017. Um, but during that time, I also went to Florida twice more to watch two spacecraft whose sole purpose was to study the sun. And those two were Parker Solar Probe launched August 2018 and ESA's Solar Orbiter, which launched February 2020. And I decided with only one week left before Demonstration Mission 2 launches, I'd go ahead and compile my footage from my vlogs of these trips into one video for you guys. So major thanks to NASA for letting me attend these NASA social events. Uh, man, I love going to Florida. I love watching rockets launch. And maybe someday I'll be able to watch Crew Dragon launch in person. Unfortunately, I can't right now due to the current global pandemic. But... Hopefully my uh, enthusiasm from these two trips helps you guys get pretty excited for what they represent, what they're doing, how they're studying the sun, and uh, yeah, without further ado, my vlogs from my two NASA socials. How's it going YouTube? This is Skull and I am here today at the Astronaut Hall of Fame at Cape Canaveral, Florida, about to get my badge for the NASA social event to see the launch of the Parker Solar Probe. I'm going to document my whole journey. Let's go ahead and see what happens. So most of my first day of attending the Parker Solar Probe NASA social event was sitting in meetings listening to all these people talk about uh, what will be on the Parker Solar Probe, or what is on the Parker Solar Probe. Uh, these are all experts in their respective fields. Um, they are scientists and engineers who um, are some of the highest uh, people in the NASA chain that had the say in what would be on the Parker Solar Probe and, uh, and had a hand, for some of them, in making the actual components that are on the spacecraft. So the Parker Solar Probe right now, as of the time this video goes out, is um, closer to the sun than the planet Venus. So in order to uh, make sure that the components are cool and not overly hot because they're so close to the sun, uh, there was a lot of technology that needed to be made in order to keep stuff cool. And uh, that's what we're about to see right here. Uh, this block right here, uh, you'll see in just a second, here we go, uh, is being heated up with a torch, with an acetylene torch, um, constantly, just making it as hot as possible. This is the kind of heat that could melt wood, okay? This is, this is incredibly hot, uh, and yet, that block is perfectly fine. Uh, it was pointed out, just to be clear, this torch is nowhere close to as hot as the space probe will get when it gets close to the sun, but you can go right up and touch it, as you can see me doing here, uh, the other side of it, and it is room temperature, it's as if there's no heat touching it at all. And yeah, this was long enough ago when I had dyed my hair, uh, man, that was, that was a very long time ago. I had dyed it blue, by now it had turned yellow, very ugly yellow. And there's the famous vehicle assembly building. I'm not going to show any footage of us going inside right now, but don't worry, that will come. So I'm in front of the launch cloud countdown clock, and it isn't on yet. Uh, it'll turn on soon, and it'll start counting down the hours, minutes, and seconds until the launch of the Parker Solar Probe. Fingers crossed that it goes on time. So the Parker Solar Probe is named after a famous scientist whose last name is Parker whose career was to study the sun. And uh, the Parker Solar Probe is the very first time in history that a space probe has been named after a living person. So it was a privilege to have Dr. Parker come in and chit chat 
with uh, both the NASA social group and members of the press to talk about his life's accomplishments and what he's looking forward to this uh, space probe uh, doing. And he was present for the launch, so I I'm incredibly happy for him and I'm happy that I was able to uh, meet him. And uh, while we were there, we got to take a look at the crawler. This is the crawler that uh, carried the Saturn V rockets and carried the space shuttles and will carry the SLS rockets in just a few years from the vehicle assembly building to their respective launch pads. I'm at launch pad 39B of uh, Space Shuttle Importance and maybe Apollo, I don't remember for sure, but I'm 99% sure. Vehicle assembly building's way over there. So it would crawl from there to here. And it would launch from here. And this is what NASA will be using to launch their SLS rockets in a few years. And eventually their exploration missions with people on top. Very, very amazing. You can see all sorts of other launch pads way off in the distance. Theoretically, every launch pad in existence here at Cape Canaveral you should be able to see. One of these will launch the Parker Solar Probe tomorrow. As we drove to our next location, we crossed on the NASA Causeway, which is where we were set to camp out uh, the next night to watch that rocket launch and we got to actually see it inside its protective building there And then we headed to Cape Canaveral Air Force Station and this particular room here is where they were monitoring the weather and uh, it's, it's worth rem Remembering that Cape Canaveral is an Air Force Station. In fact now it's a Space Force Station And then we got to sit in on this amazing presentation on the SLS rocket. Uh, this is a rock This is the successor to the space shuttle that NASA has been working on for quite some time. It is really close to getting its first launch. They're targeting to have it launch for the very first time next year. And uh, I got to record this entire presentation. In fact, I recorded a lot of the presentations in full that we were allowed to sit in on. Um, I might upload them as their own thing to YouTube as unlisted videos if there's enough interest for that. Mostly it's just for me to rewatch and, uh, and learn more about. A lot has changed since this presentation actually. Uh, SLS is still named the same thing, the Space Launch System, but the original name for the program was Exploration Missions. Uh, now it's called Artemis. And there's just a comparison of the SLS rocket and all the other rockets throughout history. And man, I am really looking forward to when SLS launches. That will be the rocket that astronauts sit on when they go to the moon this decade. So, I'm standing here beside the Delta IV Heavy that'll send the Parker Solar Probe towards the sun in just 12 hours from right now. This is really, really exciting, and of course I will be filming the launch itself, but right now, I'm not gonna get any sleep for the next day and a half, so I'm gonna go take a nap. All right, let's see, what time is it right now? It is 2.53 in the morning. So we're about T minus one hour away from the launch of the Parker Solar Probe. And right here, you can see the view from the launch um, viewing area that I'm at. And my camera is zoomed all the way in right now. <laughs> we're only about three miles away, but this is completely zoomed out. So it gives you a good idea of just how far away that is, or conversely, just how big the rocket is. So, pretty exciting stuff. This will be my first night launch viewing, and this is one of the largest rockets in production right now, so it'll be quite the uh, sight. I can't wait to see it. We're only an hour away now. In fact, less than an hour. Okay, so we were at the T minus four minute hold, and as they were coming out of that, one of the flight controllers called no go, so we're currently holding the launch of the rocket. It has another 45 minutes uh, for its launch window before we have to scrub for the day, so with any luck, really soon here, they'll come back and fix whatever was wrong and get this thing lifted off today. We'll see. Uh, we're 
That's it. Launch scrub. Unfortunately, I had a non-exchangeable, non-refundable plane ticket, so I was unable to watch the Delta IV rocket launch Parker Solar Probe to the sun. Uh, this is the live stream that was recorded the following night of the Delta IV launching, and I figure even if I couldn't watch it, at least you guys could. Uh, this is, like I said, the official live stream. This is not... From Six, me, I did not get to see five, it in person. Four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff of the mighty Delta IV heavy rocket with NASA's Parker Solar Probe, a daring mission to shed light on the mysteries of our closest star, the Sun. How's it going, YouTube? This is Skull, and, uh, it's currently 7.30 a.m. on uh, Thursday, uh, February 6th, and I'm in my driveway right now, and I am about to leave for Florida uh, to see a rocket launch, which is what this video is all about. Won't you join me? Yeah, no points for figuring out what state I'm in now. Sunshine State, indeed. All right, I am now in Cape Canaveral. It's about uh, 7.30 a.m. Friday, and today is the first day of our activities at Kennedy Space Center. So, let's get to it. two and a half days the solar orbiter will launch from that launch pad that is the launch pad that is the assembly building where it currently is 
it'll be rolling from there to there tomorrow. Hey guys, I am in a room. I'll get back to you. All right, so I need to explain what's going on here. This is the exit from the astronaut crew quarters, and every single astronaut who goes to the launch pad after waking up goes out of there. So that's what me and my friend were doing there, just pretending that we were astronauts on our way to a launch. Anyway, after that, we headed to the ULA building. ULA stands for United Launch Alliance, and that is the company that makes the Delta and Atlas rockets that launched these solar probes. And this right here is Tori Bruno, the president of ULA. He is essentially to ELA what Elon Musk is to SpaceX. Amazing guy, super great. He gave us a tour of the facilities, even showed us the rockets, the Atlas V rockets, that the Starliner will use to send astronauts to the space station next year. I was not allowed to take footage, but luckily the NASA social photographer did get a picture of us by the rocket with President Tori Bruno. And of course, I just had to get a picture with him myself. I mean, who wouldn't? Well, I have come to the end of our first day here in Florida. Time for some Taco Bell. And a good night's sleep. Okay, it is now Saturday, uh, February 8th, and today is my day at Kennedy Space Center. There's a shovel behind me. I have got to get me one of those. I'm here at the Space Mirror now, and if you ever come across someone who tells you that NASA's fake or we never went to the moon or all the disasters that happened were all staged, show them this memorial to the people who made the ultimate sacrifice in the pursuit of the future of humanity. So Kennedy Space Center has a, a thing where they have an astronaut come and do a presentation once a day. And today's um, astronaut while I was there was Susan Kilrain. 
and she got to talk about her first space shuttle mission, uh, which was absolutely awesome. And I got to go and meet her afterwards. I always try and meet astronauts whenever I can. And, of course, I got a picture with her. I mean, honestly, who wouldn't? All right, it is Sunday night. And you can't really tell, but maybe this will help. That, the little dot in the distance, that is the Atlas V rocket that will be sending Solar Orbiter out of the Earth towards the sun. I'm recording it all with this little camera, which I will start recording now. And uh, hopefully I get some really nice shots of it. Weather's currently 90% go, no problems with the rocket. Let's hope it stays that way for an on-time launch. Ah, the anticipation. <laughs> So bright. Oh, yes. Here comes, here comes, here comes. Ah. Oh, my camera doesn't do this justice. That thing's, the thing has to already be like halfway to space. That thing's already halfway to space and we can still see it just fine. It's amazing. My camera doesn't do it any justice, it's just a little blip. How long does it burn its first stage? Four minutes. What about the SRB? Is it two? Wow. Look at that. You could still see it just fine. That's amazing. Bye bye. So those were my two NASA social experiences where I got to see not one, but two spacecraft that were sent to the sun. I mean, I only got to see one of them actually launch, but that was just such an awesome experience both times. I really hope I get to go again someday to watch even more rockets launch to be part of NASA social experiences. Uh, I would be there next week watching Crew Dragon launch if it weren't for, uh, you know, the current pandemic. But I will be doing a watch party here on YouTube if you guys want to come and hang out with me while we watch the launch together. So anyway, that does it for this video. Thanks everyone for watching. I, I am so glad that I got to share this experience with all of you. And that pretty much does it. 
Uh, if you want to learn more about either of these spacecraft, links to their official websites are in the description below. Congratulations to NASA and ESA on their solar probes, and I hope to see much more from both of you in the future. I'll try and make sure I'm in frame correctly. Uh, wow, that, oh, oh my gosh. Uh, <laughs> the humidity. Oh, geez.